You're listening to the Access Success Podcast, produced by Access U, a division of Access Advertising and Public Relations. Hey, let's do something big. I'm your host, Rachel Schneider. Welcome to the Access Success Podcast, where we highlight important topics focused on education in every form it takes. In the series of content creators we've talked to on this season of the Access Success Podcast, we're usually hearing from people who are in front of the camera. But today, we're going to go behind the scenes, talking to the folks behind the camera, making sure we get those perfect shots. Based in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia, Boss Motion Picture Company crafts projects around the world with budgets large and small, from six-second social media videos to full feature films. Owner and veteran director of photography, Jamie Neighbors, has a great eye, but he always shoots from the heart, which might explain why he named his company after his beloved dog, Boss. Although Boss has since passed, Boss Motion Picture Company lives on, offering more than 20 years of experience in video production. Please welcome to the studio Jamie and his right-hand man of the camera department and general assistant. Assistant Walker Hooper. Hello. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Yeah. Great for you guys to both be here. So to start us off, Jamie, tell us more about how you got into video production in the first place. Oh shoot, that goes back a <laughs> long way. Uh, the, the initial start, I, I've always, since I was a kid, eight years old, wanted to pick up a camera and and film something. I remember watching TV with my dad and watching Star Wars. I'm like, Dad, I want to direct one of those one day. Uh, here we are 30 years later and I started in news uh, I think we both share a similar uh, path with that yeah uh, then I moved into creative services at WSLS um, uh, from there I then went freelance for about 15 10 or 15 years working for other production companies around the area mm-hmm. and in 2015 I decided I was going to st- start doing it for myself instead of for other people and here we are today yeah and and how has that shift been from working at a news station then going the more creative route and freelancing to now actually owning your own company and being able to provide that service and call the shots well you said it it's calling the shots i don't have anyone well other than my clients (laughs) telling us what to do but um you know we kind of run things we want how we want to and um uh, it's it, no one's telling you what to do. Well, Walker <laughs> might have a different view on that. But. Yeah, I might be the one being told what to do, but you know. Well, what drew you to this work, Walker? Um, to be honest, I kind of had an unusual path as well, uh, where I started off more on the uh, digital side of things. So I actually have a degree in uh, uh, a bachelor's in computer animation. Okay. Um, and upon relocating back to Roanoke, I was just kind of seeing what opportunities were around and literally hit up every single person I could think of that did anything creative visually. Yeah. And uh, met with Jamie one day, and he kind of just said, well, I'll give you a shot, but you're, you're, we're going to have to put the training wheels on pretty quickly. Um, <laughs> so, good. yeah, so he took me out on my first shoot. I believe it was Delta Dental. I don't remember. And, uh, yeah, I, 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 I mean, ever since then, it's been a learning process every single time. So, yeah. you know, it's been... Almost six years now. Gosh, I was going to say three. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, oh so five and a half, technically. So I started right. at the beginning of 2018. So. And since you both have been doing this, what would you say is your favorite part of the process? Go ahead. Oh, boy. Um, definitely the, the shoot days themselves, mm-hmm. I would say. I mean, a lot of times it's, it's just a flurry of excitement to where, um, especially shooting B-roll, I think, interviews, they're, f- they're fine and dandy. But B-roll is where you really get to be creative. Mm-hmm. And uh, especially when we're, say, at a community college recently and you know, we're filming a live class um, and you have to kind of find di- interesting different ways to, to, to show something that may not seem that exciting right off the bat. Can you give an example of maybe a creative shot that you found recently? Well, this one uh, at at the last community college we went to just kind of cropped up out of nowhere. We were filming interviews, and then all of a sudden we heard that there was a uh, animal handler in a, a classroom around the corner. So there was a giant pet tarantula and snake. That, whoa, whoa! Yeah, yeah. And you never know what you get on a <laughs> shoot day. Exactly. So you know, the, 
we got to just kind of walk around the corner and and uh, see this small boa constrictor and 22 year old tarantula and film that I don't it's probably not gonna make the cut but it's always you know it's always something different yeah I think it's really fun to shoot animals or anything like that when you have such a great visual piece that people don't get to see up close like that before you get really nice close-up shot and all the I'm just already thinking of all the hair on that tarantula and it's like (laughs) Uh, giving me um, the goosebumps. Uh, <laughs> so, Jamie, what about you? What's your favorite part? Uh, I'll echo what Walker said. The, the shooting days are always fun. It's a controlled chaos. You know, things shifting. Nothing ever goes as planned. <laughs> uh, no matter how well planned out it is, it's uh, you get on set the day of, and something's changed. Somebody has shifted something, so we've got to shift. And you know, just the excitement of, of the chaos is is fun. It kind of goes back to live TV. It's, it's oh, of uh, course. It's just the the chaos, but uh, it's exciting as well at the same time. And then the you know obviously the the creative part of it, creating pretty pictures um, in, in a scene that, like Walker said, might not be so visually appealing. So it's it's how you shape light and and position your cameras and where they go and. You know, what lenses you're using, all those different things go in to, to kind of make that happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we're going to get to that. I, I did want to touch on before we do, though. So um, technology has evolved so much to the point at, at, in this generation where everybody has a smartphone. They're getting better and better cameras on them. How has professional equipment also improved or how has that evolved your process when you go to a shoot? And why should businesses then consider hiring a crew for their project still and, and having that equipment and that experience on hand? Sure, um, it, I think that's easy. It's, it's Anybody can pick up a, a phone and, and point it at something and try and take a picture, but that's not really where the art of it lies. Uh, the art of filmmaking and, and storytelling and what we visual production is is the eye of the beholder yeah um, you have to know what you're doing how to shape that light where the light goes um, you can't you can just walk into a, a, a room and just point a camera and shoot it but how good do you want it to look do you want it to look good or do you want it to look like someone walked in a room and shot it with a camera phone mm-hmm. uh, so that's the, the the biggest differentiator um, sure technology is getting getting better with with cell phones and it, it does make incredibly good pictures um you can take uh, a, a good dp and give him a phone and he'll make you a very pretty picture like i say it's not really the equipment so much it's who's behind it and and, and the, the crews that they use to to make whatever whatever recording device you're using the best it can be mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so when you step up to your professional level cameras you have this would be maxed out oh, in, yeah. in, in all regards and in, in, in everything when you step up into our level of camera systems it's infinitely higher the quality and and that you're capable of achieving Mm -hmm. so yeah i I would completely agree um and i i I think that uh viewing audiences are are more perceptive than we tend to give them credit for Mm -hmm. so um we can say that somebody with a phone camera can achieve something close but somebody in the audience who's viewing it it may not be able to put their finger on it but they notice that it's not as good and I, i i just tend to believe that wholeheartedly that people are much more perceptive than we get them credit for so yeah yeah good point for sure and i've also noticed (laughs) being that we've worked with you guys on shoots many times um I, like when you worked in news, I'm sure that you had a huge camera, right? Oh, if you were going out with a reporter, I mean, those cameras were insane. And My then, back still feels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or if you're going out with a live truck with that giant satellite that you used to have to, you know, look look up and live so you could put the the mass up and and get that shot. Um, and now everything is is capable of doing from your phone. But then you guys also have these tiny tiny cameras that I see you guys using in the field that like you know bounce and move with you when you're trying to capture a subject or get b-roll in those creative ways and i feel like drone footage has also i mean just changed the game oh it's a yeah game changer for sure Mm -hmm. what what just a couple you know a decade ago if you were to go out and try and film something in the air for a commercial production you'd have to rent a helicopter a pilot fuel cost i mean it was two thousand some dollars a day just for the equipment cost not to mention your film crew and you know so it was very very expensive to get any kind of aerial footage Today you can get a drone for five hundred dollars, and get some pretty darn amazing <laughs> looking footage. So mm-hmm. it's it, technology certainly has has changed that game. Yeah, 
And I don't think the novelty of drone footage have, has worn off yet. Uh, it still looks just as magical as it did, yeah. you know, during the helicopter days. Yep. So, and maybe we'll we'll become numb to it eventually, but yeah, still seeing gorgeous drone shots of Not landscapes. Soon, yeah, I, I don't foresee it going away. Yeah, I'm starting to see it even more in like movies and TV that I've been watching on Netflix because you'll notice how a drone flies differently than a helicopter where a helicopter, you know, maybe they're way high up in the air and getting that shot of like the cityscape or something. But now you can get a drone to follow someone's footsteps from when they're like leaving their house and yeah. walking into a town. And it's so smooth. I mean, it's just fantastic. Um, and so going back to what you guys have talked about before with preparation and you're getting ready for a shoot, what goes on before you guys even get on set and start shooting? Walk us through how you would prepare for a project and learn what a client's needs are. Uh, Never-ending battery charging. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> that is our bane of existence, mm -hmm. uh, constantly charging batteries. Now, it starts with client relations. You want to, when an account is given to us, we take it, we look at it, we see what's the scope of the work, we want to see what's involved, who's needed, um, what the client is expecting, what's required of, of us. And then we kind of work from there. We, we want to, if it's a very creative process, we want to be, you know, collaborative with our clients. You, typically they have a very good idea uh, of what they want. And they tell us, we want this, this, this. And then we take that information and we, we translate that into visual images on screen. So, um, but again, if, it, if it's a creative process, we'll collaborate with, with the client to see exactly what they're looking for, you know, different, what style of lighting they want, what uh, style of uh, storytelling, you know, is it fast paced, is it slow paced? Mm -hmm. And there's so many variables, but uh, from there, then we take it into pre-production where we'll go over scripts, we'll do script breakdowns, shot sheets, we'll look at the script, we'll say, okay, this shot needs to be, you know, wide shot, uh, interior, you know, we'll break down a script that way. Uh, and then that leads right into the production process, so. That's a, a very a very general and, and quick explanation. Mm -hmm. And I'm very fortunate to be left out of most of that process <laughs> because that you know that, that might is, change. Soon. Yeah, but that that is that is a massive headache. That uh, you know, and and like we said, shoot days are always subject to change. Mm -hmm. But you try to get it planned out to the nines yeah. just so that you have something to fall back on. Well, and like you guys also said with, you know, battery checks, making sure you have always have extra batteries, have extra SD cards and things that you can shoot on. I can't tell you how many times early in my news career I would get somewhere and my battery died or I discovered Run that <laughs> my SD card is full and I need to, you know, like go back to my laptop and plug it in. It was it was crazy. So that preparation and getting in that habit is definitely something that um, saves you so much stress and time in the long run. Mm -hmm. um, and when you guys are on set as well, one thing I've noticed, too, is um Oftentimes you may be working with people, whether they're interview subjects or clients, who have no experience on a professional video shoot before. So what tips would you have for folks so they could best prepare to get the most out of their time when they hire a crew, whether it's pre-production and, and they've got to you know, know a little bit about how to communicate with you about that process or people who may be nervous about being on camera? Um, for, for client relations, people hiring us, um, I think it's just a... If they haven't done it before, you kind of just have to do it to really get in there. Mm -hmm. um, aside from that, uh, when you're going into talent, when they trying to make a lot of a lot of times, talent comes on set and they've never seen a camera, never mm -hmm. you know had one pointed at them in this in this capacity. So you know we're we're a fun group. We we like to have fun on set. We joke around when it's time. And we make our everyone try to feel comfortable. You know, welcome. They, usually everybody ends up laughing and carrying mm -hmm. on having a good time. So I think that's a big part of making I interviews or talent, whatever you want to say, uh, feel comfortable on set. Just, just make them laugh. Yeah. And we got a lot of, lot of goofy guys on our crew. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and try not to make it too serious of an environment. Because um, when, when everybody's just kind of staring you down and, and you're under Tension the hot lights. Feel, yes. yeah. It can get so intimidating. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we are very privileged because you know, I feel the tension sitting in front of the cameras now, um, so I, I can understand the pressure that they're under. Um, so you kind of just try to make them feel like it, there's there's nothing they could do wrong. Yeah. So. 
you guys bring a great positive <coughs> energy to set as well. So that's why I think we obviously love working with you guys and so and many of our, our clients enjoy it too. So I do have uh, another question for you guys in regards to projects and this may be like trying to pick a favorite child, but what would you say is your favorite project that you've worked on? As boss or as just an individual? Just an individual. Hmm. So I, I can get us started because this is very recent. All right, go ahead. Okay. Um, it's not access related, but we did recently shoot a music video. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was fun. Um, who? So we held a, a small little local competition to see, you know, who was most deserving of a music video and ended up choosing this band, uh, the Jared Stout Band. Oh, I've seen them. They're fantastic. Yep, and they're picking up some real steam. Um, so they had this one song and, and an idea for a music video, and Jamie worked with Jared for a few weeks, months, um, and just came together with this very kind of unique script for a one-location music video. Really? Okay. Yeah. So it, we shot it all here in Roanoke at the Coffee Pot. Yeah. Brought six in hours. Six hours. Did it all in one, one day, basically. Um, oh, wow. Brought in a big fog machine and probably had 30, or, fog machines. Yeah, 30 or 40 extras. I was just about to ask, were there people in the audience? Was it like they were giving a concert and that was the video? Yep. Yeah, that was a major part, component part of, of it, yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, there was, there, was a, there was a narrative through line to it. And, um, and really, that was the most experimental, I think, we, I've gotten to be. Um, as, as, as part of boss is you know we would turn on these neon green LEDs and blast them all over the room and you know just telling certain extras to do certain motions and and it was just it was very tense because we had such limited time but it was also very loose we to where have limited time. yeah <laughs> but you know we, we could re it, the whole day was playing so that was probably one of my favorite projects we've, we've been able to do music videos are, are, yeah. are always fun you can't go wrong. Like, mm -hmm. no, nothing you can do. It's just play, have fun, and see what you get. Mm -hmm. The they energy there well. has to be fantastic. They're so much fun. Because mm -hmm. a lot of the extras, they come in, they, they, again, a lot of people have never done this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's always like your, your 15 minutes of Hollywood, right? Mm -hmm. It's you sure, know, yeah. small local, you know, music video shoot. But uh, it's still fun. Like, we get out there and we have a good time. We treat it like a, you know, a big set. It's just like anything else. But it's, uh, they have a lot of fun. And is that complete? Is that, can I see that somewhere? You can indeed. <clears throat> yeah, it's online. YouTube, uh, probably all over. Yeah. Okay. Facebook I'm, as well. <laughs> I'm going to look that up like right after we wrap this up here because I'm, I'm really curious to see how that turned out. Yep. That's awesome. <laughs> so what would be your, your favorite then, Jamie? Well, I gotta, I'm got i a filmmaker at heart, so i got to go to a film project. It was probably one of the uh, – a movie I shot for sci-fi. And it was a, a, a goofy B movie. But it was, you know, released on the big networks and all the that sci stuff. The Sci-Fi Channel. Yeah, on and... Sci-Fi Channel. Oh, cool. And, you know, it was, what was it, 16 days we filmed, I think, and probably 16 hours every day. Um, it, so, again, it's, it's, it's a wash, rinse, repeat cycle. Uh, you, mm. you, for a DP, which I was on that, on that project, you... you you start the project, you get on your first day of set, you shoot all the, the footage for one day, you wrap after shooting 12, 14, 16 hours a day, you come home, take a quick shower, you look at the footage from all of the footage from the day, make sure everything looks good, called your dailies, and then you look at the script for the next day, the shooting schedule for the next day, then I have to make it, my shot sheets, what I was telling you about earlier, you know, you gotta pick out your shots where the cameras are gonna go, or at least rough plan that, and then your lighting position as well. So we'll do lighting diagrams, we'll do uh, shot sheets. So that takes, you know, a couple hours. So by that time, it's, you know, midnight or whatever time it is, and mm -hmm. you get, you know, three, four, five hours of sleep and get up and go do it all again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I remember I didn't see my family for, you know, most of that time. Right. You know, it would be like a, a you know, wave high or by as we're crossing paths. But it's just so insane. You know, the, the film crew turns into your family, really. Mm -hmm. At that point, you're, you're together for so long. You have your fights, your spats. You know, it's, <laughs> it's funny to watch all the personalities come together and, mm -hmm. and work. But it's an incredibly uh, fun 
process at the end of it. Uh, when you look back, you're like, man, I'm glad I'm done. Uh, uh, phew, that was crazy. Let's do it again. You know, mm-hmm. it's kind of that 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 you know, glutton for punishment mm-hmm. mentality. Yeah, I couldn't do it all the time, but certainly I think uh, a film is is in my future uh, at least what I want to do. Right. And was that shot here mm-hmm. around here? What was it, it was called? Shot- it was called Hashtag Follow Friday. Mm, mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And was it like, so I think sci-fi, I think like scary movies it or was, like alien movies. What was it? It was a very goofy slasher movie. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like the Those teenage, are the best kind. Yeah. Teenage in the woods falls off a cliff and lands on a, 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 a tree branch mm-hmm. and sticking up. So <laughs> really goofy stuff. <laughs> yeah. But so fun to shoot. Absolutely. I'm sure. It, it mm-hmm. was, again, grueling, but fun. Yeah. Grueling and We had and some gory. days that were cold. I mean, some of the days that we were filming out in the woods, they were just freezing cold. I had on like two or three jackets, you know, full headgear and everything. But And you do that all day, it gets to you. But um, again, it's so much fun to, to just be in the trenches like that. Yeah. I've always been the type of person of when we used to go out and buy DVDs. You know how you could buy a DVD and it would have like the bonus features oh, mm-hmm. and behind the scenes. Oh, yeah. And I love doing that with my favorite movies and watching like the behind the scenes production days. Oh, yeah. Or maybe there's like a beach scene, but it's actually dead of winter. Right. And it's freezing yeah. cold and everybody's the in like cruise. bikinis. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shivering behind the camera. Oh, it's great. It's great. So, yeah. No, it's been so fun talking to you guys about this type of stuff. And uh, again, like I said, we love working with you guys. Likewise. Since this is the Access Success Podcast. Uh, we have to ask, could you both share a recent success story, personally or professionally, whether it was a uh, latest, you know, really awesome shot you're proud of or uh, a project that you're excited about? Well, I'm excited about all of our projects. Yeah. We, we, we try to approach every project with excitement and passion, you know, but that's kind of in my heart. But um, we did just get a new van. Yeah, uh, I was going to say. A new production van, so that's exciting. Okay. Uh, we're exploding at the seams with all of our gear and needed something really good to, you know, carry it around on our on our sets. And, oh, mm-hmm. I'm sure. So that was a good addition. Um, Walker, what else? I mean, um, many blessings. I, I, yeah, yeah. There's a lot to count. <laughs> well, and, and, you know, my mind immediately goes to gear as well um, because uh, recently uh, I was blessed with a uh, FPV drone thanks to Jamie here. Um, and so I've been getting practice in uh, on the weekends. Um, and if you're unfamiliar, FPV drone is where you have to slap the big goggles on your face and you see everything the drone sees oh, through so first person view. Oh, so it's like VR a little yeah, bit? A little bit, yeah. Um, so, and uh, I've been getting some practice in and finally uh, did my first uh, sweep through with some tree branches without crashing. So right. I'm, I'm improving. So that's that's my success. That's recently. a success? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so congrats. Maybe, maybe maybe in the maybe in the f- some future access commercials, I'll I'll be flying it through some car windows or some tiny Love little it. loopholes. Yeah. Yeah. Walker's been a, a, a blessing for this company and myself. Oh. He he handles a lot of stuff when I can't, and so uh, yeah, we decided to get him a little Christmas bonus there. So. But he still got to use it on our shoes. Yeah. That was yeah. the deal. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So practice makes perfect. Exactly. Well, can't wait to see those shots. Where can people find you if they'd like to learn more about Boss Motion Picture Company? Always on the web, www.bossmpc.com. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? Facebook? Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Boss Instagram, Motion yeah, Picture. Boss, I don't know all their tags. But Boss sure underscore. Put, what do you do? Put it here? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, people okay. can search. Yeah. People can find yeah, it, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. It's intuitive, yeah. Nice. So go check that out. Go check out Boss Motion Picture Company. And thank you, everybody, for watching and listening to the Access Success Podcast. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks for having us. Bye. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks for listening to the Access Success Podcast, produced by Access U, a division of Access Advertising and Public Relations. Find us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram to keep up with what the world of education needs to hear at Access U Agency and connect with us at accessu.com. Let's do something big.